In 1974, Dr. Donald Barnes and Dr. David Wetmore were the originators of the first ever recorded Science Olympiad. Held at St. Andrews Presbyterian College in Laurenburg, North Carolina, this event was an all-day affair with high school students from 15 schools in North and South Carolina. Twelve years after the St. Andrews event, Science Olympiad was introduced in Macomb County. On April 14, 2012, Chippewa Valley High School hosted their 26th annual Elementary School Science Olympiad Tournament. The district's elementary tournament started in 1986 under the direction of Chippewa Valley's biology teacher, Robert Jacobson. When Mr. Jacobson retired in 1997, Ruth Cummings, an elementary coach for 11 years, took over as the Science Olympiad Tournament Coordinator and has continued the tournament for the past 16 years. The tournament consists of 16 events, which occurs on a single day. Events fall under three main categories, science concepts and knowledge, science processes and thinking skills, and science application and technology. The categories are either knowledge-based, hands-on, or engineering-based. Knowledge-based events generally have two participants taking a written test or analyzing data with mathematics. Some examples would be force in motion, grasp a graph, or Zowie estimation. Hands-on events have two participants performing experiments or interacting with physical objects, such as crime busters, rock hound, and A is for anatomy. An engineering-based event has two to three participants who must construct a device to the specific parameters and test their device against others. For example, mystery egg drop, bridging the gap, and water bottle rockets. My name is Stefano Moricini. I coach uh, bottle rockets at Mohawk Elementary. Uh, I started uh, coaching this event four years ago with my daughter, and now I'm here with my son. And after my son comes up my little daughter, so we're gonna keep on continuing with this. The rocket's body is built from a two liter soda pop bottle. Fins, parachutes, and other items may be added to increase the hang time of the rocket. However, no sharp pointed objects, glass, metal, or adhesive, such as super glue or hot glue, that will weaken the strength of the plastic bottle may be used. The team or contestant will add the desired amount of water to the rocket before it reaches the launch pad. Once attached to the pad, the judge will pressurize the rocket to 75 PSI and launch it. The rocket with the longest hang time wins. Hello, my name is Jeff Samalski from Fox Elementary, the head coach for the water bottle rockets, uh, Science Olympia 2012. Um, we had our great team this year. We met and built our rocket out of two liter bottles, lots of testing, failures, successes, all kinds of good ups and downs. Uh, Weather is always a factor at launch date, which makes it interesting. We're looking forward to the regional competition coming up, hoping to do a little bit better. Um, we are working on Mystery Egg Drop, an event for the Science Olympians to learn to think on their feet. They are issued one grade A egg and a bag of materials which they do not know what will be in the bag. They must devise a device to hold the egg and protect the egg from a drop point. So they, the day of the event, they will drop the egg anywhere from one and a half meters to three meter height and hope that the egg survives. In Bridging the Gap event, each team is given a bag of identical materials. The bags are filled with objects such as straws, coffee stirs, paper clips, strings, etc. The teams have a maximum time of 20 minutes to construct a bridge that can span the longest distance while supporting a tennis ball for five seconds. The tennis ball will be placed in the center of the bridge and the bridge may not be attached to the end supports in any way. The bridge that spans the longest distance wins. If there is a tie in the event, the bridge that weighs the least will take first place. Busters. The students are acting as forensic scientists. They have to solve a crime and they are using chemical tests to decide which powders were left at the crime scene. They have uh, handwriting samples, fingerprints and shoe prints and ink 
uh, chromatography that they all, they do all these different tests to try to figure out who was the culprit that did the crime. In Rock Hound, the students learn about different rocks and minerals and how they are formed and what they are used for. And they take a station test in that event to um, show their knowledge of the rocks and the minerals. A is for anatomy, where the kids need to study different muscles and bones and how they work together. Charged Up is an event where the students learn about electricity, conductors and insulators. It's a station event where they go and do hands-on activities dealing with electricity. In Don't Bug Me, the event is about, obviously, bugs, and the students need to not only know the names of the bugs, but all of their feeding habits and their habitats, too. Starry Starry Night, the students learn about stars, constellations, galaxies, planets, and they take a, a test based on their knowledge of all the stars and the universe. For whether or not, the students learned about weather systems and how the weather systems form, how we detect weather, uh, the different instruments that we use. This is weather or not, and each station, the students get one minute. They have between two and four multiple choice or true or false questions to answer on their Scantron sheet, as well as two essay questions to answer. We were in weather or not, and it was really hard for us because we didn't know most of the questions, but we took educated guesses, and I think we got some of them right. This year, the Wildlife Safari was on Michigan fish, so the students used their field guides to learn about the different fish around Michigan, and they answered questions about that. And in Zowie Estimation, the students use their estimating skills to do three different things. They need to estimate the volume of some boxes. They also use their estimation skills to figure out how many objects are in a large container, you know, like a jar of jelly beans, how many jelly beans are in the container. And they also need to grab a cup of 100 grams of some substance. And they need to estimate to the best of their ability if that cup weighs 100 grams. The rubber band catapults cannot contain wood or wood composite material. Most students use PVC and other plastics to construct their project. A 20 concentric ring with a center dot makes up the target. The catapult is placed four to eight meters from the center of the target. With a rubber band suspended freely under its own weight, it cannot be longer than 22 centimeters in length, not circumference. Points are acquired by the rubber band touching or landing inside the ring when it comes to rest. Students will shoot a total of three different rubber bands. The closer they land to the center of the target, the more points they receive. My name is uh, Rashad Shashakli. I am the current supervisor for the rubber band catapult event. Uh, and this, this event here is, is one of several that the different districts have to prepare the students for uh, the big game in May. Okay guys, you did a pretty good shoot. Your distance is the same across all three shots. I assume you used the same setting for all three? Okay, your distance was perfect. The only thing that was a little bit off was the side to side. And if you make a tiny little adjustment over there, it can make a big difference out here, especially the farther away you get. So just practice eyeballing down the, down the, uh, the barrel of the thing to keep your, keep your eye right on the target, and you'll do just fine. Okay? Yeah, good job. This event here gives them a chance to practice their shooting, uh, make adjustments, and uh, make sure that they're still complying with the rules and the regulations for the particular events, whether it's this one or some of the others and we try to encourage the kids to have a good time, relax, um, and uh, just have fun. Hi, I'm Lisa Alfonsi and I coach the Reflection Relay team at Fox Elementary School. My team is in the uh, paper practice portion of the test right now. We learn about angles and using protractors and how light reacts when you reflect it off of mirrors. It's probably my favorite event at Science Olympiad. A team of three members must reflect a light source off of four, three by four inch mirrors before hitting a predetermined target. One of the mirrors is mounted to a wall above the zero mark on the large protractor placed on the floor directly underneath. 
The light source is a focusable mag light placed on a wooden stand at the same level of the attached mirror. With three handheld mirrors, the light is directed towards a target and must rest on the target for a count of three seconds. The team wants to complete this task in the least amount of time. Over 6,200 teams from 49 U.S. states compete each year in three levels of competition, regional, states, and nationals. Most schools hold practice tournaments, which are referred to as invitationals, like the one held at Chippewa Valley High School to prepare teams for counties. This year's Elementary Science Olympiad Tournament was just as successful as past years. Three schools left with trophies, some students left with ribbons, while other students left with information on where they need to improve so they can be successful at their next level of competition. And third place trophy goes to Fox.